heretic is, is such an overused word. It totally is. It's yep. just, it's like you, if you can create a label for someone, call them a heretic, then you don't ever have to deal you with them again. Them. Yeah, exactly. You mark them, you categorize them. That's, it's just silly. It's foolish. Mm-hmm. So let's talk one of, a, one of my pet peeves a little bit, or actually I get fired up about this, so I'm going to ask you questions and answer them myself. Okay. So, <laughs> That's the safest way to do it. Yeah. Uh, but I, um, I'm always perplexed, you know, when people think we're a cult. And again, what, defending yourself saying you're not a cult is almost like right away you've lost the argument. You've lost the moral ground. And yeah. we've talked about this before. We, you know, have you stopped beating your wife? You're like, you can't answer that question right. You know, so even this question is difficult. But uh, been I've never since, beat my wife. Yeah, uh, me yeah, neither. Just, okay. just, right, right. Sorry you had to ask. The... Uh, <laughs> But this idea, I mean, I've been saved since four, raised in interdenominational church uh, that came probably out of an assemblies, uh, assemblies without the Holy Spirit was maybe kind of the flavor <laughs> of uh, the theology, <laughs> which which is not quite assemblies. But, uh, um, and, and then Bible school, yeah. you know, seminary, <clears throat> love the gospel, believe the gospel. Uh, you know, I was raised uh, by Jonestown and uh, not by Jones, but that whole that uh, uh, the, the the cult in San Francisco that oh, uh, yeah, yeah. where those many uh, hundreds of people died in the jungles of Guyana, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Like so, we you know it was played out Guy, right there Guy, in front of each. Yeah. Uh, I forget his name. Yeah, I want to say James Earl Jones, but that's not that's that's, that's Darth a- Darth Vader's <laughs> voice, and so <laughs> not a cult leader either. But the uh, um, so it's just like oh, it just drives me nuts. It's a bit of a trigger word for me, yeah. so I have to kind of dial down, you know, when I when I think about it, because I, I know I know the gospel. And I know we teach the gospel faithfully. Do you want to jump in before I go on a tirade? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like what you say. If we're a cult, we're really bad at it. We're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, cults are just by by nature are, are just about control, about yeah. being exclusive. Uh, you come join us. You break off ties with everybody else. And uh, that's the opposite of what we do. We live to empower people. We don't... Uh, we don't control them at all. We really want people to become individually successful mm-hmm. uh, as a part of a church, part of a community. If they come and say, you know, we really feel that we're called to go down the street to such and such a church, we bless them as they go. There's, there's just there's And not like, sure, you can do that if you want to abandon the true faith. It's actually, yeah. no, go be a part of that body of Christ because exactly. those, exactly. those folks are part of the body of Christ. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's like, so we we're— Terrible at keeping track of our people. You know, we you've said at our at our introductions to Bethel, like when we're talking to newcomers, we, you're like, there's a lot of great churches in town. You might want to go there. And it's, <laughs> you meet it. You know, yeah. <laughs> you, know you meet it. So yeah. uh, we, we want folks to be salt and light everywhere. So it's a very strange accusation to kind of have. Partly there's also, um, cults generally tend to, um, when they've done psychological assessments of them, they tend to start thinking completely alike. You know, okay. you tend to kind of get a dominant personality, yeah, you know, yeah, like they're yeah. all like these either. Now, what I mean, a dominant personality, like the average member is trying to become like a particular sort of personality right, style right, or so. And like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. we have so little of that on our own leadership team. Yeah. We have such a v- wide variety. We we don't all agree as a leadership team. And we were going through stuff right now because we don't yeah. agree about, you know, certain things. And yeah. we, we try to go to great lengths to give space for each other to think and be a part. We're heading into a political season where... We have people in our congregation who love President Obama, will vote Democratic in this election coming up. People who uh, love President Trump and will vote Republican. They're in the same church together. Yep. Now, I'm not sure a lot of folks would like being in a church like that because it gets uncomfortable. It's it's actually nicer to be in, in a place where everybody thinks like me <laughs> in group think, and this ain't that. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So, it's true. So it's, a, it's so, it's so uh, frustrating to me that this kind of cult controls thinking, controls people. And we're like, yeah. hey, we have folks who are really em- embracing Black Lives Matter. Other folks who are like, hey, we're concerned about some, we understand me, the Marxist underpinnings of that. Like, we're all doing church together. Yep. We're all holding on to each other. We're all believing the best, <laughs> trying to like, help me hear, hear your, sorry, help me hear your heart yep. and stay connected because I love you. So we're protecting the connection in the midst of it. Is, is that your experience too? I mean, yeah, ab- yeah, absolutely. It's just... You know, we value truth. We yeah. value theology. You have to. It's the revelation of God and his nature. Some ideas are so, truer than others. So, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So we're in the dialogue about those. We're, mm-hmm. we're, we're committed to truth, but we're also committed to people. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to sacrifice <clears throat> my relationship with you mm-hmm. because we think different about this. Yeah. I, I don't want, if it's, 
especially if it's not an essential aspect of the gospel. Yeah. You know, if uh, if somebody denies the deity of Christ, well, then we need to have a conversation. Yeah. And, no, no. And, yeah, and, you, yeah. You're, you're disempowered in our environment. Yeah. And so there are, yeah, I, I've talked about this. Like, I don't know if somebody's in another, deno- <laughs> another denomination, if someone's in the Mormon church, uh, I'd be like, I, your relationship with Jesus, I, I don't know about that. You, God alone knows your heart. Yeah. I do know I'm not going to empower you to preach and teach in, in my church. Like, we, yeah. we have a fundamental difference about who God is, yeah. uh, that, that, he, that, that he's one and not many. Um, and so it'd be like, those are, those are things like, <laughs> I can appreciate that God might be, or Christ might be reaching for you or connected to you. I can't empower you in our environment. That's true. We, but, we empower people according to trust, you know, measure, yeah. measure of trust. Yeah. And, uh, um, and, and trust so. in their fidelity to Scripture, as we understand it. Absolutely. Yeah, that God, God alone is yeah, one. Absolutely. One of my um, one of my favorite ones about this is uh, I, I don't I think this was a story I was told. I, no, it didn't happen to me. So, um, but somebody's walking <coughs> by a man who looks like a parent uh, in our environment. So he's whatever he's in his forties or something like that. And and um, I think the the gist of it, as somebody's eavesdropping on their telephone conversation <laughs> as they walk by, but they the phrase is this: "Honey, these people aren't a cult. They're just happy to be Christians." <laughs> That's awesome. It was the most awesome <laughs> thing because I'm like, yeah, the joy of the Lord. We really do enjoy each other. We think life's a gift. Yeah. And some people, you know, there's a cynicism in America, like anybody too happy is like, eh, they're on something or they're, you know, they're <laughs> part of something weird or whatever. Americans kind of have this love of cynicism, like, yep, yeah, the weather's good today. Yep, yeah, today, but maybe not tomorrow. You know, we have that yeah. odd, don't get too high, don't get too low. And yeah. we actually love the Lord. We like him. We like his presence. Yeah. Um, we laugh together a ton. And it, it does, though, like... You people are a little too good to be true. Like, I love it. The English, they call us the happy, clappy crowd. It's not just us, but any charismatics, the happy, clappy crowd. Did I say clappy or crappy? But I think it was, I think it was clappy was the word I wanted, <laughs> which they also call our school supernatural ministry Hogs, Hogs uh, the, the Harry Potter school. Oh, yeah, yeah. That makes me yeah. giggle, too. That's funny. I forget the name of the school. <laughs> it's because I'm so pure. I don't know the name of that school. But uh, <laughs> I'm reaching for it. It's not coming. Um, so th- those are some of the things for me. We don't have the personality change. We, and I'll just tell you the other one is that, uh, you know, the lack of groupthink, which I find so strenuous in our environment because we don't all agree, think the same way, and the lack of demand that you believe like we believe to stay connected to us. We're just like, hey, if, if you're, a, a, you know, I think in our statement of faith, it's um, the church is all who've put their faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, that's that's our understanding of the church. So. Um, we're trying to look for ways to stay connected, to honor the work of God as yeah. you put your faith in Jesus, not demand you have to think just like us. Um, sometimes I've heard folks say, Bill expects us to have a gospel of supernatural power, which I don't have, so therefore he thinks I'm a heretic, therefore I think he's a heretic. Huh. I know, which is interesting, interesting. <laughs> like, and that made us all crazy. But uh, <laughs> it, let's just talk about that. Do you do you think people that don't move in signs and wonders uh, are heretics or don't have the don't have the gospel? Oh goodness, no, yeah. no, no, not at all. I I just think, you know, the miracle lifestyle is for everybody. Mm-hmm. It's available uh, to everybody. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not going to call you a heretic because you don't do it. Heretic is is such an overused word. It totally is. Yeah. It's just it's like you, if you can create a label for someone, call them a heretic, then you don't ever have to deal you don't with have to them love again. Them. Yeah, exactly. You mark them, you categorize them. That's it's just silly. It's foolish. Mm-hmm. It's foolish. No, no, I don't believe that at all. I I have friends. You know, I've had friends. I've grown. I, I was. I didn't have any. <laughs> what? But yet, I was. I you didn't was, have any miracles in your. Uh, oh, in so, my early years, no. So, goodness, no, no. But yeah. I loved Jesus with all of my heart. I thought the miracle lifestyle was reserved for very special, specially mm-hmm. called mm-hmm. people. And I do believe there are people uniquely called. But yeah. But uh, one of the things that was such a wake up call for me is that it is that it would was for everybody. Yeah. You know, it's for, yeah. It was for those who followed Jesus. And so I'm not going to use that as a point of shame for someone who doesn't think that way or doesn't have that in their life. I just try to use what I see in Scripture to push people forward, in a sense, to encourage them, listen, you could, you could do this. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, mm-hmm. Jesus, when he, uh, Nicodemus said, we know that you're a teacher come from God because no one can do these signs that you do yeah. unless God is with him. So all through the New Testament, there is teaching and doing in the same phrase, mm-hmm. in the same sentence. Mm-hmm. 
because for Jesus, the teacher, he taught what he was about to do or he's explaining what he just did. There was a connection. There wasn't a divorce between thought and action, behavior. They were, they were brought together. Yeah. And so he would teach the word and, and miracles, and he would demonstrate. Mm -hmm. He would bring deliverance. Mm -hmm. he, would just, he didn't just talk about freedom. He'd set somebody free. He didn't yeah, just yeah, talk about yeah. you know divine health or something and then leave people sick. He, he didn't do that. He didn't say I'm the resurrection and the life and leave pe dead people around him. He always mm -hmm. he raised whoever you know he was he was uh, exposed to. So the point is is that uh, it's available. There's stuff available for us. Yeah, and we're not separating uh, based on that. And we and as far as back to the cult conversation that the you have to do this in order to be a part of the Church of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You'd be like no no these are available to us. Yeah. They're ways to manifest the kingdom. No. So, which heads leads me to probably the my biggest pet peeve in some ways, <laughs> which is the demand for conformity. It's almost like we get told you're demanding conformity, and we're not, and yet they are demanding conformity to their particular understanding of something or other. True. And it's like, wow. I mean, who's the cult when you are saying we've narrowly defined this? And as I mentioned earlier in another podcast, there's thirty three thousand, thirty three thousand denominations. Now, some of those are because of a, an anointed leader, you know, um, A.B. Simpson, the CMA, or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amy Simple yeah, McPherson. McPherson uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Four Square. Uh, yeah, yeah. Four Square. Yeah. So that sometimes it's not like I'm against and I've got a new deal. There's like a new expression of the, of the yeah. Lord that, yeah. that we are really resonating with and we're going to follow. But a lot of the denominations are about, we just can't agree. We just disagree about communion. We disagree agree about baptism. We disagree yeah. about the end yeah. times. We disagree like, so this this drive for con conformity is really scary. It's super scary. Yeah, scary. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think unity, true biblical unity, is impossible without diversity. You have you can have uniformity or you can have unity. Unity requires diversity. I think. Yeah. And I I don't I don't think. We really are challenged in the subject of unity if we all think alike. So the Church of Rome had had Jews who had newly come back to town after, or for, for a couple of years after being expelled. They're a Torah observant Jews, and they're mm -hmm. with the uh, Gentiles who, hey, they, there's probably some anti-Semitism <laughs> in Rome anyway. And now yeah. the Jews haven't been here; we've been in charge, and now the Jews are back in these house churches, and you're trying to figure out. How do we get along with each other? Yeah. And Paul yeah. is trying to, in the book of Romans, trying to help them, not just in 14 and 15, he's trying to help them get along all through the book. He's like saying, you guys are not allowed to separate. Yep. But you guys are going to eat kosher food, and you're not, and you just can't kill each other over that. <laughs> <laughs> well put. <laughs> I, it's just like, you just can't do it. And partly because Paul's like, I need that church functioning because you guys are going to you guys are gonna love me and send me to Spain. You know, that's kind of in, in yeah. his mind as well. I can't have a dysfunctional church that's, not representing Christ uh, yeah, exactly. in their inability. So they're practicing different. He's like, you still need to love each other, even though you're practicing this different, uh, differently from each other. So this unity does require a diversity. It's actually proven in its no, diversity. It's, yeah, it's absolutely. It, it's uh, the eating meat. Yep. Um, eating meat is biblical. Said the hunter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Eating meat is biblical, but he says if somebody doesn't, then you adjust what you're going to do to accommodate them. It's just yeah. simply, I have respect for what you're thinking, what you're feeling. I'm not going to live that way in my home, yeah. but I, when I'm with you at your home, I'm going to honor that. Yeah. And it, it's just, that's the whole thing of diversity. The unity in diversity is, yeah. is needed. It is. And Paul, often I'm going to limit my freedom for the sake yeah, of this group yeah, yeah, yeah. in yeah. some ways. I, you know, I would say in Timothy, not everybody's going to love this interpretation, but in Timothy, <laughs> you know, I think he asked the women to limit their freedom to teach in Ephesus at that time, like because of the crisis in Ephesus. I don't think it was permanent, but I think he's like, I need you to limit your freedom in this area wow. uh, for this particular thing. So this is what it is to be a Christian, yeah. is we protect the connection with each other, and we will go the extra mile to stay connected. Yeah. So not going the extra mile to stay connected it's not not great. It's not good. Not great. And so I, one time, in a, I only got half the quote in Christianity Today. Uh, <laughs> and I, I think because I only gave half the quote, let's be clear, I think that was, they did a, a good job on that, that article years ago. But I, I think I said something like, um, hey, you might, uh, 
what is Chris, Chris call us? Chris calls us hyper charismatics. At some, it's like <laughs> and we're less weird than we were. But that's still in there. It's still in our roots at some level. But he's like, we're not just charismatic. We're hyper charismatics. And so, in some ways, like, yeah, I mean, some stuff happens that we do. I'm like, huh, all right, well, that's that's unusual. Uh, you know, <laughs> that would not be how I would have thought that would have gone. <laughs> But um, the the deal was, um, I think my quote was something like, "You might not you might not like us, but we love you." And it was a little bit of that whole thing of trying to say, "We might not be your cup of tea, but we are not looking to separate from you." Yeah, yeah. Which I think actually makes people more mad sometimes. Like, well, I am going to separate from you because <laughs> I need to have this line of purity, yeah. you know, yeah. in in my environment. So by saying that, I'm not trying to like make anybody bad, but I am yeah. like saying we are intent. On staying connected. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll talk to the students. I'm like, listen, you, you might love Bethel now, but you, you might be heading, you might become an Anglican uh, Christian. Yeah. You know, you might be, <laughs> I, I think I mentioned some other place, but Hank Hanegraaff, who's the Bible answer man, mm -hmm. didn't love renewal and Holy Spirit laughter, as, as I remember quite well in those days, but he has become an Orthodox Christian and joined the Orthodox Church. Well, that blew a bunch of people's brains. Like, they're like, why did you leave the faith? And he's like, I didn't leave the faith. <laughs> That's I funny. became an Orthodox Christian, so it was a, a delightful moment, you know, when uh, part of that I've got the right answer crowd, like, was, didn't quite understand the breadth of Christianity <laughs> that yeah. my brother Hank was moving to. Uh, and so it just shows how we've really got to stay full of love towards each other, keep our love on yeah. as we're having these discussions. <clears throat> we can disagree, but we got to have our, our love on. No, that's exactly I right. I talked a lot. Do you want to? No, it's just fix a, any of that, Bill. <laughs> no, no, nothing to fix. I just I'm laughing. I'm laughing at you and with you. Yes, yeah. yes. No, we so just box. need to be with people that stretch us. Yeah. You know, it's 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 legitimate. It's if if I want to influence everybody, then I'm kind of in a position where I say I'm I'm pretty much where I want to be. Wow. And uh, kind of arrived. Yeah. Kind of, I'm, kind of I'm, have learned everything I need to learn. I'm, yeah, I'm just there, and that's not healthy. We we just need to be with people who challenge us and are thinking. Our lifestyle, you know, Heidi Baker is a great example. I mean, I she she so challenges me and how I think and how I live and and being with people that uh, you know in sports you don't want to just play basketball with somebody you're better than. You want to play with people better than you because you want you want your game to improve. And that's what we need with each other. We we can really learn from each other and just become better, better yeah. at everything. Yeah, there's an interesting thing when you leave an environment. Some people think I've got to denounce that or like I no longer believe that or that was terrible or that sort of deal. I I don't understand the need to do that. It's a bit of that cancel culture again. Uh, but I say to my tribe, look at the purity that I'm I'm walking in. Yeah. Uh, what do you want your take on that? Well, it's it's a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, we don't think that way. We don't live that way. We don't practice that. We don't tell anybody else to do it. Yeah. Uh, they may do it to us, yeah. but it's not going to cancel uh, any value we have for them as an individual. Uh, we, you know, we just try our best. We try our best yeah. to celebrate people for the grace they have. Some people, you know, they're, the way they were raised, they have a completely different view of church life, That's true. of life itself, yeah. of the scripture, of everything. Yeah. And it doesn't mean they're a heretic. It just means they were they were raised to think a certain way mm -hmm. when this subject is brought up or when this opportunity comes. And uh, and if you don't have respect for the way they were raised, you're never going to be able to, to mm. really— It doesn't mean I have to approve. Yeah. It doesn't mean I have to say, yeah, you're right. Yeah. It just means, yeah, you were raised in that environment. I probably would think that way too. I wouldn't tell them that, but I, in my heart, I would say, yeah. yeah, you know, if I were raised in that denomination, I probably would think the same way you did. That makes sense. Yeah. That's a, a more gracious than I would, would not, than I would be or was being. But in some ways, yeah, your ability to go, that need you have to separate, like I probably get that because that's how your how your circle ran, how you yeah, understood yeah, exactly. And it is like I, I don't know about you, but when I was raised, um, in some ways we weren't sure about the Pope that potentially he was the Antichrist. I mean, I, that was partly <laughs> a part of the Christian deal. Um, yeah. My church was awesome, by the way, just to be clear. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. love these folks. That, that was probably not an awesome idea we had, but it was an awesome <laughs> environment. Um, but yeah, you can have suspicion. suspicion. I, one, of our, um, one of our people in our congregation went to travel somewhere uh, in uh, Eastern Europe, I think, <clears> somewhere <throat> like that, and was, they were a little concerned about having her speak, not because she was a woman, but because Chris Valentin had actually met with the Pope. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. 
Did you Chris meet with the Pope, or am yeah. I imagining that? Yeah, he, was, that, no, <laughs> he was in a meeting. Yeah, he was, he was, in, he was yeah, in not a personally. Yeah, uh, but he was in a larger he, meeting. Yeah, yeah, forty, fifty people, or yeah. some thirty people yeah. maybe with uh, with the Pope. Yeah, Pope Francis, yeah. and I think spoke highly of him and appreciatively of him, and yeah. so they were almost not going to have oh, yeah. her talk because yeah. of that. And uh, thankfully, this environment was like listening and said, tell us more, tell us what you're thinking. And uh, they weren't listening for a denunciation of the Pope, thankfully. Yeah, yeah. But they were listening for, do you have the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, um, that, that you're artic articulating? And she articulated it. And they're like, at the end, they felt like a genius having her speak and were appreciative. Good, good. And it went super well. But it was an interesting Inter litmus test that she kind of ran into. Interesting. Like you're saying that sometimes you're raised yeah. in an environment or even a <clears throat> culture or society that has a very big... Bright line. You yeah. cannot cross this bright line. Yeah, that's and, true. And so uh, that does lead to some of our separations. It does. I think just understanding another person's perspective helps you to be a little bit more patient. You mm -hmm. know, it doesn't mean I'll ever agree. Mm -hmm. You know, people who are uh, so strongly opposed to us in certain areas because they perceive us a certain way. It's too much work to convince them otherwise. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'll just, I'll do as best I can and honor them, but... Uh, um, but it, it just understanding sometimes help you, helps you to be a little bit more patient. Having some generosity and grace in the way you're yeah. hearing even your critics or other people. Yeah, yeah, All yeah right. exactly. Well, yeah. you're a better man than me, my friend. No. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Can you talk about our perspective when they leave, like how we treat people yeah. that leave? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so we have folks that, that leave our environment. Some uh, just called other places, some happy, some sad, uh, What's your like? What's in your heart when people leave our environment or leave our church, mad or not? It's like, what are you thinking? Um, well, I want them to do well. Mm -hmm. You know, I want them. If there was something that we carry that could improve their life, I hope that they got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I have no need to address them or to speak evil of them or to somehow hope they learn their lesson or whatever. Yeah, that's that's right. that's not in the. <laughs> Yeah, that's not in the in the in the way we do it. But but I, I'm gonna I don't know I'm just gonna try to honor them the best I can. My dad taught me this very well. He would uh, the church here, uh, you know, it was 50 years ago or whatever, mm -hmm. went through a horrible split, and uh, and my dad uh, treated those who I mean they were angry and yeah. almost on the edge of violence, very very nasty. He treated them with honor and respect, and uh, it so happens that the ringleader of the movement. Uh, many years later, his wife got very, very sick. And my dad was the one that he called mm. to come and to pray for her. And when she died, uh, he asked my dad to do the funeral. Wow. Oh, mm -hmm. goodness. What I, that, you know, you, you watch stuff like that happen. And, it, you know, you don't have to have a sermon to back it up. Mm -hmm. You just saw life lived in a way that demonstrates Jesus. And that's what he did. Mm -hmm. And so that's my, my ambition, my goal is to represent that approach well, mm -hmm. so that I, I don't burn those bridges, but live with real honor towards people. Yeah. yeah. Was that the Sunday, I think, you, we talked about the day the Cadillacs left the parking lot? Yeah. Is, is yeah. that that same day? <laughs> <laughs> but part so of that, as is a matter that, of fact, it was. A, it was. I mean, just that those, these folks who left were the wealthy, and yeah. the yeah. Uh, and so it was a very, it was painful emotionally, oh. financially, in all these ways, it was very, and, and then the, the threat of violence even was the menacing nature of the leaving. Yeah, yeah, it was. Your dad was, was kind of manifesting it. Yeah, it, it was, you know, sanctuary of, of uh, that would seat 600 people mm -hmm. uh, the next Sunday was 65. 65 people in that wow. empty cavern. But something, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, the Lord honored his faithfulness. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's when the whole Jesus People Movement, the Charismatic Renewal, all mm -hmm. was brewing at the same time, and mm -hmm. it just exploded. Wow. And it just became a glorious haven of rest for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And we had something like that in 95 and 96. Yes, yes. With the move of the Holy Spirit. We had about a church of about 2,000 or so. And then when through the, the move of the Holy Spirit was so uncomfortable to some that we about 1,000 of our folks went to other churches yeah, or yeah. started another church. But again, that was mm -hmm. the, in your heart. I remember constantly we, you spoke well of them. You blessed yeah. them. Yep. Uh, it was just part of your under the way you you handled it. Yeah, 
yeah, I still talk and meet with one of the main ringleaders. He's a good friend. Ringleaders is kind of a loaded yeah, phrase, but ring, yeah. yeah I, I don't know how else to say it. One of the guys in one charge. Of the leaders. I, I, yeah, I guess that's derogatory. But I, I, you think he's a ringleader, but I yeah, understand your point. Yeah, I, I didn't mean it quite that way, but no. but you understand. He's yeah. he's one of the one of the individuals leading the charge. Yeah, and you know, and he's a good friend. We still talk. We're supposed to connect here sometime soon, and yeah. so it's beautiful. Anyway, so yeah, yeah. there's long time Jesus yeah. relationships that we hold on to. Yeah. And you can have these disagreements uh, over the, the move of the Holy Spirit or whatever, holy yeah. laughter. It doesn't mean we're done with each other. That's true. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, absolutely yeah, right. it's been part of the, I think, the grace on our house. Um, yeah. And then to, to continue some of these relationships or have them be restored or just have them be mutually respectful from a distance at some level. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. We're here for each other. That's, that's right. Mm -hmm. Just inter interesting. Just a, a few months ago, one of our former board members died. A wonderful man, mm -hmm. but he got real uncomfortable with the mm -hmm. whole movement, and he left. And there was no conversation; it just he just took off. And he and I sat down and had a wonderful healing conversation, probably a month, maybe six weeks before he died. Wow! And it was just it, you know he's home. Yeah, he's home, and uh, he's with his wife. You know, I mean, yeah. he, he's all that heaven means. He is there, but. Uh, but I'm so thankful that the Lord gave us an opportunity. Somebody talked to me and said, hey, you'd love to talk to us. I said, I would love to meet with him. Let's." So we set up the time and we sat down together and he told me what he had a problem with and I explained what, what actually this is happened. This 20 years after or something like oh, that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, yeah. yeah, all right, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. Told, me, he told me, yeah. which I had no idea, he told me mm -hmm. what he had a problem with and I, I explained it. He went, oh, he says, I always wondered about that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, dude, <laughs> ask earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> maybe before you yeah. leave. But anyway, your point is, yeah, yeah. is the, the yeah. reconciliation and beautiful. the mutual respect was was there, so you could actually have the reconciliation. Yeah. He he had it. That's why he's willing to meet. Yeah. And of course, I I welcomed it when I saw uh, what he was carrying. Oh, I'm so glad I had the chance before he died to kind of put healing salve on that wound. You know, because I, I had no idea. Mm -hmm.